Education is believed to be the bedrock of a country's development. Many are of the opinion that if Nigeria will solve the apparent problems in her education sector, the solutions have to be largely unconventional, tailored to specific problems and with the use of technology. This is 101 on Plus TV Africa, and on this episode, we will focus on education, technology, and entrepreneurship. My name is Elsie Godwin. Joining us virtually is a renowned Nigerian entrepreneur, business mogul, and investor, Sim Shagaya. Shagaya is popularly known as founder of one of West Africa's largest e-commerce websites, Konga. He is the current founder and CEO of U Lesson Education. He has received many awards and accolades for his remarkable entrepreneurial achievements, one of which is being listed among the 10 most powerful men in Africa by Forbes in 2014. Hello, Mr. Shagaya. Hi, Elsie. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining in. So I've always wanted to ask you this question, and this is an opportunity to do so. So you founded Deal Day, and then you founded Conga. What did you learn from the dynamics of the model of both businesses? Well, um, both of those businesses were flavors of e-commerce. I think um, at the time, um, Nigeria was just kind of getting used to the idea or the, the behavior of buying uh, online was just starting to be adopted. Um, so, you know, that came with a, a, a lot of learning. The larger ecosystem of sort of tech entrepreneurship was not as big as it is now. Um, but I think when you look back, um, you know, from 20, uh, 20 backwards, um, behavior has changed a lot. Um, I can see that things were very nascent back then. Uh, people are much more open to uh, conducting transactions, whether that's e-commerce or education services or a whole range of different services. People are willing to do that now much more. And um, and the, t the ecosystem itself has developed. I think there, there are much more savvy, um, worldly entrepreneurs that have emerged in Nigeria. And, um, and the funding environment to support those entrepreneurs has also developed a lot. Do you have an exit strategy for every solution you create? Of course, in terms of businesses addressing consumer needs. As an entrepreneur, when you build businesses, you develop an emotional attachment to these businesses, almost like you, um, you do with family. Um, and that emotional attachment is there. But I think also, uh, I think an entrepreneur has to be um, a bit detached also. These, these things are very much like, uh, you know, planting and then harvesting. Um, so it's not top of mind. Um, I think when I build a business as to how I'm going to exit this business, uh, I think that can take away from how well you build the business, actually, if you're, you're constantly thinking about how you're going to sell it. Mm. But, you know, the focus for me is always try and create something of value to society, um, try and build something that people want, and then all of the other things, including exits, I think happen naturally and take care of themselves. Mm. So it's never a deliberate exit strategy thing for you? Uh, no, I, I've never built, I've never set out to build anything with the prime um, reason of, of selling it. No, no, it's never been the case. Um, like I say, I think you, the focus should be on creating experiences and services and products that um, people love and people want. Um, and are willing to part with um, their money um, for. And then, um, you know, we live in a world in which um, the, the, the business environment is just so much more developed and sophisticated than it was 100 years ago, even 20 years ago. And so you will invariably find players that could, that would see more value that even you um, perceive in what you've built and be, would be willing to, to buy that business. I like that you talked about the sophistication of business now. And I think COVID-19 has made it even more sophisticated. So from your wealth of experience, mm. what are some of the tough decisions CEOs and founders of businesses will have to make now due to the pandemic? So I think um, it's become a bit trite to say that the, 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 what we're going through right now is kind of, um, it hasn't happened in a very long time. Um, the last time anything like this happened was, um, just about 100 years ago. Um, I don't think that this situation is going to be as bad as then. Uh, human beings have learned a lot um, since 1919, um, the Spanish flu. We've learned about microbes. We've developed antibiotics. Um, we have um, technologies that allow us to communicate and self-organize self in a way that allow us to 
um, practice and enforce um, social distancing in a way that we haven't um, ever before. But these are challenging times any which way. Um, the, the pain that is going to be felt is going to differ from sector to sector. But I think also there will be opportunity to make decisions that we wouldn't have ordinarily made as business leaders um, and to do experiments that we wouldn't have ordinarily done. I mean, I think one, for instance, is right now we're in the middle of sort of the largest corporate experiments and this work from home experiment that we're all running right now. And I must say, for me, it turns out um, it's turning into a very interesting experiment. I'm seeing really interesting results in terms of, um, you know, reduction in overheads, in terms of an ability to engage with and motivate a team, um, in terms of um, my ability as a leader to understand um, who is self-motivated, who doesn't need that oversight of um of you know a CEO sort of staring over his shoulder in a physical office, and even even me as a leader, I think you know physical offices give us the sense of control, um, and I think to a large degree that sense of control is a bit of an illusion. I think um, I think a lot of things will change um, because of this. I don't think offices are going to go away. I think we'll find new ways to um, to work. It's what I just touched upon to to study, to shop, to eat. Um, to communicate with loved ones. Um, I think all of these things will fundamentally shift. And then these will have um, an impact in the long term um, on how we travel, on um, commodity prices like oil. I mean, if we're not, we're not moving around as much, um, then, you know, I don't see, you know, oil prices kind of returning to, you know, $50 a barrel and above, for instance. Um, so there will be all these sort of second and third degree effects that, I, frankly, I don't think we can anticipate all of them. Hmm. I think that's an interesting perspective to the working at home, the adjustment to working at home from home. But um, let's look at you, Lesson. Though you raised about um, three point one million dollars seed around um, you, Lesson, launching a business in the middle of a pandemic is a bold move. What were the thoughts behind that decision? Well, LC, the sequence of events was actually a bit different. So we had, um, well, I think technically you're right, because the the roots of the pandemic started in the end of November, the beginning of December. Um, and we made our services available to the public on March 1st. But that said, we had begun development of this project um, as early as May of 2019. So this started a while ago. We didn't know that this was coming. As the pandemic started to, even before it was called a pandemic, I think we started to get a sense that something extraordinary was going on as a management team of ULESSON. Um, we had a sense that, um, you know, we knew what we were building was of value in the sense that we take some of the best teachers we can find um, in Nigeria, absolutely brilliant people. I mean, these are some of the most educated, some of the smartest people who can take very complex scientific concepts and explain it in a way that any young person can digest, any learner can digest and assimilate and gain, gain real academic mastery. And we're taking these people and we're using digital technologies and media and all of these things and combining it and creating this amazing product. We knew we we're creating something of value. But then as, this, um, as the pandemic started to sort of show its true um, impact, we knew that we'd see an acceleration of ad adoption. Um, it wasn't something I've had friends and, you know, um, sort of families say, oh, did you know this was going to happen? We certainly didn't know it was going to happen. We're just really pleased that we can play a role in um, allowing people to continue to learn, even in the context of, against the backdrop of um, school closures. So would you say you lesson is one of the solutions to um, the need for an apparent transitioning from online experience um, in learning or a supplement to the sector? So it's a, it's a multidimensional problem, I think. So um, first of all, I think we have to establish one fact. Like, so I think the current way, the current um, framework for teaching um, and educating um, young people and learners, even adult learners, I think is, um, is not sustainable. It's serving some people, but it's obviously not sustainable um, when you're looking to educate a, a young population that is as large as Nigeria has, it just doesn't work. 
Um, if you look at Nigeria's spend um, as a percent of GDP or as a percent of government spending on education, it actually is reasonable um, when you compare it as a percentage to other countries. But nominally, it's, it's not good enough. Um, and that is because our resources are just limited. And I'm not making any sort of judgment call here as to the, um, the efficiency of spending. Um, that's not the call I'm making. And this is also not just limited to government spending. It's even private investment also. So when you look at it like that, it's clear that the model of brick and mortar, we all sit down in a classroom, face front, um, and learn and, um, and are promoted through classes, and then we get a certificate or a diploma at the end of that. It's clear that that model is going away, and it's not going to continue through this century. I think that's very clear. And what... Um, what basically this um, crisis will do, I think, is accelerate some of these trends. Um, so crisis have a way of doing that, of, of accelerating trends. And then they also have a way of manifesting second and third order effects that we didn't anticipate. Um, so, you know, this model we currently have of go to a classroom and learn and face front and a blackboard and then, you know, teacher-student ratio of one is to 20 in some Nigerian states, the teacher student ratio is one is to 70. I've even heard of one is to 90, which is just ridiculous. I've seen some of the learning materials on you lesson and I must say they are pretty broken down in a way that should inspire learning readiness in students. Now in building this platform, what gaps did you find in our curriculum and learning method? Yeah, you know, this, so this is the thing I'll see is, is that the, the, and this is why this has to be a joint effort. It's not just all about technology. Um, the, the curriculum itself is, it, it, we need to really step up our game here. We're getting left so far behind. Um, and we're capable of so much as a people. I think our young people can be taxed and um, they, they, they can, we can get away from this rote learning where we're just forced to memorize. And we can get away from this very simplistic curriculum. Right now, we're developing the junior secondary school curriculum, and we're very excited about it. Uh, it should be due out in sort of uh, July, August, or thereabouts. But, you know, as I look through the curriculum, for instance, of business studies, uh, one of the things you go over as a student is the modes of, mode of advertising. And, and this business studies class is really foundational knowledge for young people between sort of GSS 1 to GSS 3, to teach them the basics, the foundations of business. And you go through, you know, modules on advertising. And more time is spent on talking about car stickers, bump, the kind of stickers you put at the back of a car, than talking about digital advertising of the type that you find today on, um, on Facebook or Google or new media, which is just, um, you know, it's just, you know... <laughs> I really can't even comment on that. So we have to modernize the curriculum. How would you describe the willingness of parents to encourage um, use of an app for study in Nigeria? Oh, it's been fantastic. One thing that I've consistently seen, um, if you get away from sort of the economics of the operation of the business itself, is that Nigerians as a people show a tendency to grab onto new technologies and to try them out. It's definitely what we're seeing here at ULESSON. Um, we're seeing a range of income levels, parents from, um, you know, sort of higher income, urban Lagos to rural Kaduna are subscribing for their kids. Um, and, of course, Nigeria sort of, uh, you know, word of mouth drives a lot today. So we see interesting things where a kid will sign up and then um, they will start using the service. And then the next week we'll see orders or subscriptions from around the neighborhood. Um, or the same street as that person. So we're seeing that. And that means that that basically is a, um, that function is, is driven by the fact that uh, the young person is willing to talk about it or the family is willing to tell their neighbor, you really should check this out. Like for the first time, I understand Newton's second law of motion. Oh, wow, this is how photosynthesis works. Um, oh, I understand um, um, what eukaryotic cells are. For the first time, I can see an amoeba swim behind an instructor and you can point at the protoplasm and the nucleus and all of that. When the product is experienced, it, it, um, I think adoption is just, um, it's, it's just, um, it's a natural consequence. 
Um, and so that's what we're seeing. I think we've been really, really pleased with it. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I wish we had more time to discuss more, but um, we have to go. Thank you, Sim. Thanks for having me again, Elsie. All right. Take care. We would go on Bye. a quick break now, but when we return, we would be joined by a man who is passionate about education and has found ways to use technology to address some of the problems identified. Mm -hmm.